Hey kids, I'm back to do another short video on another John Romero release for Doom, because for Doom's 30th anniversary, Romero released Sigil 2. And if you like Sigil 1, this is like that, only more. I don't know exactly what to say with this one, because I feel like the excitement of a new John Romero Doom release isn't quite the same as it was last time, and I can't say I enjoy it as much as last time, which could be the fault of diminishing returns. I tell you what, I wouldn't have gone for a Doom 1 episode again, and John Romero knows that, because in the README, there's a section dedicated to answering the question, why Doom 1 and not Doom 2? Sigil 2 is a 30th anniversary celebration of the 1993 Doom release. It was designed to fit the design patterns and look of the original Doom. I did not want to deviate from the original much, so this unofficial episode 6 uses the original texture set for the levels and adds a new sky like Sigil did. Allow me to speculate a bit here. I think Romero prefers the slower, more horror-like atmosphere that gets a little broken when you have a super shotgun, one of gaming's most murdery murder sticks. It is what it is. And before I go any further with this, when the website says beware of ultra-violence mode, they're not kidding. Ultraviolence in Sigil 1 could be a slog, and if I played all the way through Sigil 2 on UV, my rectum would still be bleeding. So, like last time, play on Hurt Me Plenty. If you're curious what Sigil 2 looks like on UV, here, here's some of the first level. The enemy count is drastically higher, and you get chased by a cyber demon before you've spent a minute playing. It's just mean. Ultraviolence in Sigil 2 isn't even real to me, it's a joke. It's like, oi, bro, you having a giggle, mate? It's absurd. Like last time, it completely changes the way you have to play it. Whereas Hurt Me Plenty is more in line with the classic UV experience, and occasionally is ball-breaking. I, for one, can't wait until Ultraviolence becomes nothing but a troll skill level in custom wads from now on. Since writing the script for this video, I went and played Sigil 2 on UV, and it's not actually as bad as I was expecting. However, it is kinda tedious because of the number of caco demons you have to shotgun through, and sometimes not killing monsters in the monster killing game is preferable. Which seems bad, right? While the episode is mostly fine, it suffers even more from the limited monster selection than last time, and it's something that's always there to be just a little annoying, even though I think Sigil 2 tries to mitigate that by, in general, giving you bigger guns sooner and more cell ammo. And another thing, Jimmy Paddock's mini soundtrack, you know, the one I have on hand that isn't the Thor soundtrack? Awesome. As I expected. No notes. Okay, with that said, there are heavy spoilers coming up, so be warned. A returning mechanic is shooting that evil eye to open things, though I didn't see any of them malfunction this time. Another thing you have to be on the lookout for is our old friend Fire Blue, everyone's favorite texture. Now, there are little patches of Fire Blue that you have to shoot to open secrets, like this one in the second level, right? That opens one secret with a zombie man and one armor bonus. The trigger for it is a shootable Fire Blue wall all the way out here in a lava lake, because if you want 100% completion, you need all the kills, all the secrets, and all the items. And this one secret has two tiny little things to get you there if you find it. That's a troll secret. However, this teeny tiny little level has seven secrets in it. It's called Violent Hatred, not to be confused with Perfect Hatred. The level names are truly Romero-esque, kids. We've got Violent Hatred, Cursed Darkness, Twilight Desolation, Fragments of Sanity, Wrathful Reckoning. That one is definitely my favorite. That's a Death Clock song. Vengeance Unleashed. You know, after the wrathful reckoning, you need to unleash some more vengeance. Descent into terror, shattered homecoming, and abyss of despair. Oh, and wrathful reckoning? Guess what? <laughs> I was surprised to see it. I thought we'd only get dark hell levels in this episode. And this one, along with another I won't spoil, even though the secret exit is pretty easy to find and abruptly ended the level it's contained in, has some more tech-based themes. It's a nice change of pace. The gameplay still suffers from the lower monster variety, 
but I'll be damned if Romero doesn't try. Like, there's a period in the first half after the introductory level where I feel so over-equipped that when I get to the sewer level with the cyber demon fight, I'm not really scared because I have a BFG that I got on level 3 and 600 cells. This filled me with confidence. I got a BFG on one of these really narrow ledge paths before I even got a rocket launcher or plasma gun. I was cooking, man. I'm fine. I'll be okay. But then, over the course of the next couple levels, I find out, no, I'm not going to be okay. I'm not picking up ammo like I was before, to the point where I was having trouble finding bullets. There's enough resources to get through, at least on Hurt Me Plenty, but after level 5, Sigil 2 puts the fear of God into you, and it helps the episode immensely. The back half is a lot more fun and effective, in my opinion, with level 6 probably being my favorite. Romero's unique visual style remains intact and is usually a strength for these levels, and that's certainly true of the later levels. Maps 6 through 8 are actually really cool looking, with the final level probably being my favorite visually, though I'm not a fan of the final fight with a spider mastermind and two cyber demons. Then again, I'm not sure how you can end a Doom 1 wad if you're not gonna make your own boss. I found out after publishing this video for patrons that it wasn't just some level trickery that made the spider mastermind tougher. Romero tripled the amount of health it has, so in a sense, he did add a new boss, in the most tedious way possible. Sigil 2 suffers from being a sequel because because it feels like it's treading the same ground as Sigil 1, where that episode felt unique and distinct from the other Doom episodes. That's kind of the problem of doing a sequel in general, or any kind of continuation. I prefer Sigil 1, is what I'm saying, and I'm not sure if that's because you can't quite replicate the feeling of seeing Abaddon's Void again. Sigil 2 is certainly interesting, though it has some weird design choices that I can't stand, and I'm not talking about the sewer level, although that Cyber Demon fight was a pain in my balls, taking place in a pit of slime. One thing that I will point out that seemed uncharacteristically sloppy was how in Fragments of Sanity you have all this lava, but the sectors are so broken up and over-designed that you weren't in a sector long enough for it to register that you take damage from the lava. There's really no reason to have this floor broken up like this, and it's kind of distracting. I was thinking of trying this in a different, more vanilla source port, but this is made with GZ Doom in mind after the release of the first sigil, and I'm running it with the same strict Doom compatibility settings. No, ignore the footage from before I turned off Bloom. I had Bloom on as a gag, I promise. I do not play with Bloom on. Bloom is sinful, I'm so sorry. But you know what? On Ultraviolence, there's a cyber demon there, so that fixes everything. From the ending text, I get the sense that Romero's gonna move on to Doom 2 levels next. At least that's what I took from it. There aren't any words in the level names that I don't recognize due to my limited knowledge of Old English and my limited knowledge of... English? So... I'll say this is seven weirdly tiled fire textures out of ten. One thing that Sigil 2 reminded me, and also the glut of features and releases that happened on Doom's 30th anniversary from the community, Doom is never going to die. It is such an important cultural and technological touchstone that people will be making Doom wads after we're all dead. I take comfort in that. I had to work so hard not to write Doom as Eternal in that outro.